Hey guys, I rebuilt my TH400 transmission. The disassembly video was already up on my channel uh, a week or so ago. So the disassembly, you can go back and look at that. It's not a highly detailed technical video, but with this service manual, you need that. So with that service manual and this video, if you got any mechanical abilities at all, and you don't even need no, you don't need to buy a bunch of tools. I mean, I, I do it. I just use, I just got regular shop tools that I rebuilt this transmission with. So yeah, guys, I'm not a professional transmission guy. I mean, you'll see when you watch the video, but the purpose of this video is for your average shop mechanic that's scared to do automatic transmission rebuild, old school one. After he watches this video, he might be a little bit more motivated about working on his own transmission. Yeah, guys, this video is nice and long. I mean, hey, you don't want to miss it. You just don't. I mean, you're going to love it. So most of you already seen my parts washer 2000. Man, that thing works great. I'm about to rebuild the direct drum. Uh, first thing I need to do is get the piston out so I can put new seals in it. I made this tool several years ago. It's just a piece of three inch exhaust pipe. You see, I just cut a knot, couple notches in it, cut one side a little wider so I can have more room to get my snap ring pliers in there to get the snap ring out. And I just put that on my press and press that down. Now this is the old type pistons. It's got the aluminum pistons in it, which is the good stuff. It, it's not the stamped pistons. And this one's got a check ball in it. Not to be confused with the forward drum that has the same piston, only with no check ball. So don't get those confused. I got my new red Ray Bestos uh, clutches. I got some uh, transmission fluid and a container. Uh, you're supposed to soak these clutches in that fluid for at least 15 minutes before you install them into the drum. So I got one set out that goes in the uh, direct drum, so they're going in the fluid and start soaking. And I'm gonna get that in my press and get that uh, piston out. So I'm using these snap ring pliers because it's on a they on a 45. I can get in there better. Uh, sorry, I don't have no light on this, but we'll be all right. Uh, I just got this set up. I just got a bridge over middle of the press on the bottom, and I got my wide hole to the side I'm gonna be working from. I got my snap ring uh, gap on this side so I can get to it. And this is just a spacer I use. So I should be able to just like that. Hopefully the snap ring come out pretty easy. Uh, that depends on how good your snap ring pliers are, by the way. And how, if you hold your tongue right, that helps too. Hold your tongue right, Bob. Might could get it out with screwdriver now. There you go. Snap ring. Make sure that don't catch in that groove and lock up and fly off in your face. All right. Now we go back to the table. So uh, I like to just work on one component at a time. Okay, that's gonna be the ring, but I got, when you put your snap ring in, make sure you put the notch between, don't get it like that, because it's harder to get it out. So get it like that, if you know what I mean. 
uh, let's see, three, three, 14, you got seven on this side, seven on that side, 14 springs. You can put two more, put 16 if you want to, but this is all you need, unless you're souping up transmission. Uh, some of your kits you can buy got stronger springs. But we'll be fine. Okay, this piston should come out now. Maybe. Yep, there it is. All right, lip seals. Got this one on the outside and one on the inside. And uh, I mean, it's just common sense. The lip goes this way because the oil is pushing from the bottom, so the lip goes that way on both of those. Uh, now you flip it over. I get a. Small screwdriver in here, and get this snap ring out. Oops, got to turn it. Uh, notice these are different. Uh, this is a. Uh, you got a sprag in there. You notice if you turn this way, you can turn it clockwise, but not counterclockwise. So just so you know that. And uh, to get it off or on, you turn it clockwise, just get it off, pull up on it. And to put it on, you get it on there and turn it clockwise, wiggle it a little bit. or wiggle it a lot till it goes on. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, sprag. My rule of thumb is if you take it out and the bearings fall out, just go ahead and stop what you're doing, go buy you a new sprag. See that one almost fell out. But we may, uh, may be okay. Uh, wanna inspect. Where your band contacts is good. Uh, this goes into your center support. You want to make sure it's not war up in there where those uh, piston rings, I call them, goes in. Might want to take some Scotch Bright, clean all that up. Uh, I'm going to take some gas and clean this up and uh, we'll put it back together with new clutches. Didn't need them, but we're gonna have them. So I got my drum, direct drum parts cleaned up, checked it out. Uh, I took a scotch Bright and cleaned that up and cleaned my steels with scotch Bright. There's no burnt spots on them, so they're good to go. That one's got a few little ridges on it. I might put that one in first upside down that way. Uh, lip seals. Well, I got the first one goes in here. Remember, the lip goes up. Uh, I use petroleum jelly. I mean, you can use transmission fluid, assembly goop, whatever you want. Petroleum jelly is what I like it because it don't stink as bad. All right. Okay, this one. Remember, lip goes against the oil, which is going to be this side. So I got the lip turned up on this one.
same here, lip gonna be turned up. Yeah, wasn't nothing wrong with this transmission. My buddy Larry in Arizona sent me. I could have just put it in a truck and it had been fine, but I didn't know for sure. So we're going this route. All right. Okay, lips down, lips down. This one lips up. Put a little... All right, this inner seal, this inner lip seal goes on that, so I want to lubricate that a little bit. And the outer one is sealed down here. And that center one seals there. It's all just common sense, guys. There ain't nothing to it. You see, it's got a little bevel to hopefully that one to go in easy, so. All right, this is, this is the difficult part. This is probably the most difficult part about building transmission is getting your lip seals in, so. Let's see if we can do it. Wish me luck. So I got a, I got a 20,000 Spieler gauge. I think it's 20. Yeah, 20. You know, I mean, I might have to go down a smaller one, but uh, I'm going to start with a 20. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is kind of wiggle this thing, try to get this seal down, wiggle it around a little bit, and that see, that has already started going in. Wiggle it around a little bit, kind of twist it a little bit. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit, try to get this other one started. I had to take this feeler gauge to go around the outside edge, try to get that bottom one going in, outside one going in. Yeah, this is the toughest part to me about building a transmission is getting these lip seals in. So just take your time. Sometimes they go right in, sometimes it might take you a while. Uh, just don't get in no hurry, be patient. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit, shove. Feel it with the feeler gauge. Make sure your feeler gauge has got smooth edges. If you got to take some sandpaper or files, you don't want no sharp edges on your feeler gauge because it'll cut that seal. Yep. That one's already in, almost. This outer one is the one that's, that's holding me up now. I'm gonna go to a smaller filler gauge, see if that helps. Piston install, take two. Uh, so I got a 10 thousandths, works better. So I got everything lubed up, got a 10 thousandths. Uh, took some sandpaper, smoothed the edges to make sure it wasn't sharp. I'm gonna stick it in there, roll it around a little bit. Get those center seals started. Then uh, start going around the outside with this Ten thousand spieler gauge. Tried twenty, but it's too tight. I guess that's good news because everything ain't that wow. It's real tight fit. There it is. She's in. You hear that thud? You know it's in. So naturally, I don't have the exact right snap ring pliers I need. So. It may be a little difficult to get in, but we're gonna, we're gonna find out. I 
You gotta make sure this ring don't get bind, binded up on that and you don't wanna bend it all up. Make sure it don't get locked up in that snap, <clears throat> snap ring groove like it's wanting to try to do. So I got a bunch of snap ring <laughs> pliers at my disposal. Hopefully I can get one that'll work. Let's see. Uh, this one's got little notches in it. That might be just the right, right one I need. Huh? Yep, that might get it. It's in. Take a screwdriver and make sure that snap ring is seated good. Don't want that to fly out going down the road for sure. I believe we're good. So that's the most difficult part right there. And I still got the front drum to do after I get this one together. So uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start putting our steel and our clutches in. Like I said, my clutch has been soaking in oil probably 20, 30 minutes now. So I got my steel cleaned up. They got one that was kind of rough. Which one was it? That one's all right. By the way, the steels are different thicknesses between this drum and the front drum and you can mix and match them to get your uh, clearances just right. And just so happens I got some more TH400 parts in storage if I need, if I need to, I can break some of it out. They're all pretty good. I guess that's the roughest one. I'm gonna put that in down first. Got rub side down first. All right, one, steel. Oh, let me get some oil on it. Let me get some oil on that steel. Transmission fluid, whatever you want to call it. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. Steel. Clutch. Now, one thing you can do is tell if you're close or not, you can pull that clutch over. You see that? I got. That clutch, I don't know, it's about even with that. I'm gonna try that. Put my lock ring in. See how much slack we got. Nope, it's too tight. See, I can't even move. They, those should move freely and they, I can't. So they, that's too tight. I'm about to find a thinner steel.
So I've been trying to get the uh, clutches in where it's got 50 thousandths because it's supposed to be 10 thousandths per clutch. Uh, they packed this thing too tight from the, to start with. When I got it, it was too tight. So uh, I took a couple thinner steels I had the front drum, I, then I got some more that had the storage for that. So I'm putting a couple thinner steels in off the front drum and a direct clutch. So I got a steel clutch. This is a thick one, 90 thousandths. The thin one's a 60 thousandths, by the way. Clutch. 90,000 clutch 90,000 clutch 60,000 clutch and also had this piece that was like five thousandths thinner than the one that come out of it. Trying to get 50 thousandths slack, but uh, it ain't got quite got it. Let's see what we can get. I could, I could use dial indicator and do some highly classified scientific rat rod calculations to figure out exactly what I need, but we could do it this way too. That first one I put in was wavy, which has got a little bit to do with it. Uh, wavy makes it not, it makes it go into gear a little softer instead of bamming in the gear. You see I got a bunch of extra parts. I have another transmission, so uh, this, some of it's rusted up, can't use it, so but, but I already got the forward drum, the piston in, seals in the piston, same as the direct drum. This, this, this piston goes in the same way, same spring, everything's the same, lip seals, all the same. And then you got the center hub goes in with the brass thrust washer right there. And uh, it's supposed to have that slack. I mean, the, the center shaft is going to hold that where it needs to be, so don't worry about that. And uh, this one's going to pack the same way, and hopefully I can get 20 or 30 thousand slack in this one. We're going to see what happens when I get... I don't need the video packing that. You already seen me pack the other direct drum. This is the same. I just need to get... To, it's got thinner... This one's got thinner steel, so hopefully I can get it where we got enough slack in it we can run with it. Couldn't get 40 thousandths on the, on the front drum. I got maybe 20. I'm putting it back together the same way it was. It's got, it just got new clutches in it. It got the same steel, everything. And uh, so I'm gonna roll with that too, see what happens. So I got, I got my brass uh, thrust washer on the other side of this. I got this plastic nylon washer on this side, thrust washer on this side. And the direct drum, I don't have to bait it, I can't mate. Well, I can bait it up just show you how it goes, but it's not actually gonna mate up till I put a transmission together, but. But that's, that's the way these two mate together. And with those thrust washers in, if you got them in, you, you got about maybe 10 thousandths slack between them, not much. I mean, it's real it's real close tolerance there, but, but that's what I got. I'm gonna roll with it. So I'm checking out the planetary gears. I mean, everything's tight there. I just took that off to check it, but uh, we good. So I got some assembly goo. I mean, most of you guys work on transmission know what it is, but it's this glues, it's grease, it kind of glues stuff together, so. I got this bearing. 
I need to glue together. Got the brace on each side. That should hold it on there. Like that. Let's see, you got a hole in my table there. So this will go on in like this. And that uh, the sun gear from the planetary gears hits on that bear and that's what that's for. If I can get it in there without dropping it. There we go. Uh, then we've got this. Bush is good. All the bushes in the whole transmission is good, so that's a good sign. So we've got another bear that goes here. Uh, it's gonna go like that. Got the lip that goes in like that. Put a little assembly goop on that bushing while I'm at it. That should stay. It shouldn't fall off of there now. Hopefully. Well, it did, huh? Let me go ahead and put it down on here then. All right, let me try that again. All right. There it is. Take the sniff. Take the stiff snap ring right there. See if I can get that in. Like to take a hammer and make sure all my snap rings are seated. Most time they ain't, they ain't so. All right. So this is good to go. Uh, my tarp bearings down there like it's supposed to be. Bushing's good. Spider gears are good. No flack on nothing. So, so that piece is ready. Okay, we got a center support out here. Uh, this has the intermediate clutch piston right there. You don't need a compressor to get that out. You can just, it's got weak springs. You just mash that down with your hand. Get a little slack, get that snap ring out. Snap ring out. You got three little springs, that's all you need. You got spot for six, I guess, if you wanted to soup it up. Uh, we pull a piston out. And you see it's got lip seal, I just got two on this one. No lip seal there, it's just got a lip seal this one goes, rides on this. The outside one rides out here, so. Okay, so we can uh, put new lip seals on that. On this, both of the lip seals go down. Little petroleum jelly. Got the new lip seals on. I got my 10,000 feeler gauge. I 
almost in. There it is. See, that one goes in easy. Easy peasy on that one. You want your springs evenly spaced, so you're going to do it kind of like that. That goes back on. Snap bring it ready. See if we get lucky. And that piston's done. This is the intermediate clutch piston, by the way. Uh, right there where the center port support bolt goes. So you, you remember the center support bolt is this fancy one that's got a hole all the way through that screws in right there and the valve body puts fluid through the bolt to activate this intermediate. I'll put the, uh, so I'm gonna put the direct drum on that center support. That's the way it's gonna be when we put it together. And uh, I'll check the function on this piston. Or you could probably just hold it with your finger over the hole. We can check that. If you're lucky you got one of these guys, you can stick that on right there. Let this touch the top of one of that top clutch. So I'm shooting for 50,000. Let's see. It's almost on zero and I could hold this hole and put air in this other hole to activate that clutch pack. If I can get it in the hole. I'm shooting for 50 thousandths. We want about, let me back that up a little bit. We want about 55 or 60. So my only option would be take one of the 60 thousandths steel then and put a 90 thousandths. But then we'll have like 35 thousandths slack. Uh, they say 10 thousandths per clutch. I got five clutch discs in there, so that's 50 thousandths. I need 50 thousandths slack. I got, what, 55, maybe 60. So, hey, I think that's golden right there. Uh, center support bolt. You can see it. Yeah. All oh, that's good. We're good to go with all that. All right, uh, and I could take my front pump and uh, just set, if I had a bigger hole, I could just set it in a hole, but it won't fit, so I just set it right there. Hope it don't fall off. I take my forward drum. That's the way it goes when you put the transmission together. Uh, I got, turn this around where I get to them ports. And unfortunately, I can't get a dial indicator on, either, on this clutch pack. And uh, I can tell when I put it together, it's a little bit tight, but we're gonna go with it. Uh, get right here to this port. Which air. We check the function of this piston. At this point, we rebuilt the direct clutch and we check that we got like 55,000 55, slack there, so we're good. Uh, we went in and checked the sprag, make sure that's fine. 
So the, the direct clutch is ready. We've rebuilt the forward drum and checked the function on that with air. We got just a little bit of slack in it, we good. This transmission's got three torsion bearings. It's got one up in here, it's got one there. It hits this side of the uh, sun gear, and it's got one there for the other side of the sun gear. So we're gonna hopefully we can stick this together. Uh, I checked the bushings. All the bushings is good through the whole transmission, so it's just been recently rebuilt. Now this has got an oil hole, and this has got an oil hole, but. You don't have to have that this hole lined up because it's got a groove all the way around inside this and this. So, but I like to try to get it lined up anyway when I put this in to get that hole lined up with this all hole. So I, I try to put the sun gear in. When you put the sun gear in, you can see after you get it all the way in, you can still see it hole. I got it all the way in up against the torsion bearing, by the way. And uh, I got that all hole up so I'm gonna try to put this on. Put a little petroleum jelly on the parts there. Try to put the hole up, match the hole in the sun gear. There we go, right there. A little more petroleum jelly, all the bushes are good everywhere, so we're good to go. Uh, this might be a little difficult, but I'm gonna try to do it right here. Might I pull that table a little bit closer, make sure it don't fall off of there. And this is just a silencer ring. Uh, it goes there, right there. It just silences, takes some of uh, vibration, resonance out of the, out of the uh, planetary gears, make a noise, so that's all that is, but uh, we gotta have it, we're gonna have it. We got it, so let's put it in there. And uh, this, I gotta be careful with this, because if you don't grab it all, it'll fall apart. You, it'll fall apart, you sprag fall out, so. I don't know if I can do this or not. Let me find out. Tartan bearing is in there, by the way. Here those gears meshing up. That's in. So that's ready to go in the transmission case. So I want to get the shift shaft out, so I put a new seal where it goes through the case. Uh, this is the part break. Uh, this is the rooster head. They call that the rooster head because it looks like the top of a rooster. Uh, I got a little finishing nail in here to hold this in, but first thing I'm gonna do, take a nice 16 wrench and, and get that nut loose right there. And you can just take a big screwdriver right up against that finished nail and a hammer. And knock that. A pair of white screws. Somebody that meant the end of that nail made it hard to get out. There you go. Yeah, just finish the nail like. See if I get this started coming out. She's coming out. Get that nut off.
nut, rooster head. Uh, yeah, I need to file the burrs off of that so it don't rip, scratch the case all up coming out. Get burred up right there and take a flat file, deburr it. Shift shaft's out. Yep, there it is. Knocked it out. Seal. See if I can get this guy out. Good luck with that without breaking it. I might get lucky. Oh, there it is. Got an old ring on it, so. Uh, I probably never even hook a wire to this, but I'm gonna change that O-ring. I don't want it to leak. Put it back in there. On your case, obviously you want to check for breaks and cracks everywhere. So these are, pro are prone to wear, you know, for the clutch steels rocking back and forth and all that stuff. So you want to check that and make sure these are not wore out bad. Uh, they got a name for these. I call them dogs. So if your dogs, so if your dog legs are shot. You ain't doing much hunting, so you gotta make sure that's not wow. I, I, all the way around, check all the way around, but this one's like brand new, so we are good. Okay, front pump. Well, I don't know why they call it a front pump, because there's only one pump in this TH400. Oh, okay, front pump. <laughs> uh, I got my case sitting on a rag on the floor there. Uh, let me just take some Just clean this up, make sure it's no burrs or no, make sure that pump goes in easy, main thing. I mean, this is, this is, I'm not putting it in permanent right now. I'm just, you'll see. Little petroleum jelly, because I can and I want to. Take the old O-ring off the pump. Give that a light embry cloth treatment. I right, got two 5 16 studs like you would have in your intake for your carburetor. Put one on each side. It ain't got to be tight. This is just temporary. Just... Now, we... now, the trick is to get our pump in the way it goes. Uh, got all your ports lined up with these ports. Let's see if I can get it in there. I hurt myself too bad. Upside down, by the way. Yeah. I know the pump's upside down. Get these uh, five bolts out. Got two short ones, two mediums, and one long one. They come out of there. All right, see how easy that was? We good there. We got a little normal break in, no problem. Let's check our pump gears. Oh yeah, they good. I can tell already by the way that didn't come out. There it is. Yeah, I didn't even need to take this apart. This is fine up in here. At this point, this would be a good time to get this guy out and put the front seal in. Okay, front seal, I got this cleaned up. I mean, it don't, it's got a little surface rust on the outside, but I got it clean. So you get two seals with your kit. Uh, they both pretty much the same dimensions, except for one's a lot thicker. And you can see you don't want the thick one because it wouldn't go all the way in. So naturally, this is the one you want. Remember, petroleum jelly is your friend. Put that seal right there. Get you a clean block of wood and the hammer that you built your house with. And you can hear it when it hits home. I like to taste the Scotch Bright. 
and clean up this surface on both of these because there's no gasket. This is a machine fit. So then take some air, blow it off, clean blue jeans, wipe it off. I would say no blue jeans got harmed in this video, but I'd be wrong. Put this back in, the ports match up with those ports. Got the gear cleaned up, take some petroleum jelly, put on it, drop it in. Confirm it spins like it's supposed to. It won't till you get it in there. We get it seated all the way. It should spin freely. These cogs point up, you can look. You probably can't see. I don't know, you might can. Anyway, this book is your friend, so in case you forget how something come apart, you can go to that book, see how it all goes back. A lot of tape, people take a big hose clamp like and, and clamp around that to hold that straight. But uh, these, these studs, to me, I like these studs better, it works better. Uh, just pull each one of them down a little bit. All right, they tight. See if I can get it out of there. Yep, there it is. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> File body. Yeah, let's get this. Uh, man, I like it when that gasket. Hope it comes all the way off without ripping, because it's hard to get off. Them little pieces, if it sticks, it's hard to get off of there. So yeah, we good. Governor tubes. They just slip right out. And they're both identical to the same, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. So uh, I don't have to take this valve body completely apart. I'm going to show you a couple things I'm going to do to it. Check. They got, some, they got a bunch of valves in this thing that don't have to come out. I mean, you take a, like a little screwdriver. I'm gonna pull this one out. It's just got a little roll pin that comes out pretty easy. When you put the valve body on it, the roll pin can't fall out. So, so I best just take a screwdriver on that roll pin, tap up on it a little bit, and it pops out of there. No doubt I'm gonna clean that up where it go in easier. There it is. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, it's a good thing I took this one out. It's it, kind of stiff. I ain't supposed to be stiff. There it is. I'm gonna clean rag right here so I know how it goes. It's got more stuff in there. All right, this has got the shift kit in it because the stock one, this land here is the same size as that. Uh, shift kit, some of them has got, or some people just take like if it, if it be turned this way, you can tell, but they just take, take a grind a flat spot so the fluid can get past that. On this one, uh, it's just don't even have, it's just smaller than this one so the fluid get past it. Uh, some shift kits has got two of these and one of them got a flat spot where fluid get past it. And I already knew I was gonna have this before I took it apart. The reason I know is because they plugged this hole. From the factory, this hole was open. But when you modify this or put, when you put the shift kit in, you gotta plug that hole. That's what that is. So I already knew it was gonna have that or something like that because that hole was plugged. I need to get this bore cleaned out and clean these up, make sure they're sliding in and out good and all that good stuff. Cause that, I, it, that's one of the most important things about shifting one, two, one, two, and all that good stuff is these, these two valves right here is the main ones. So I'm gonna get, try to get this one out now, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's gonna come right out. Oops. 
stuff went flying. <laughs> Spraying, come out right there. All right, let's see what I can get out of this one. See if anything falls out. Nope. I don't want to put no pliers on you, so come on out. There you go. All right, it's come comes out this end. See, it's got one more up in here. Yep. I'm gonna get these boards cleaned out good. All right, this is the most difficult one. We gotta make sure, let's see, I'm gonna put this in first. Uh, this one goes in first, got it lubed up. Make sure it goes in all the way. You do that with your, probably your little finger, almost. Make sure it moves, it does, it's fine. Uh, make sure you got this turned for that key, that pin to go in. There it is, it's going. A little snug fit, that's fine. Confirm that valve moves back there, which it does. Not freely though, it's sticking. That ain't good, can't have that. Might got a piece of trash in there. All right, that's gotta come back out. All right. All right, so the valve body's done. That valve's working. All the valve's working. Like I said, I don't have a transmission stand, whatever, so I'm doing it this way. So I'm using a rubber band to hold this up so in place while I stick all this stuff in. Got a bolt in there, rubber band. Assembly goop on there to hold this in. My head might get in the way, but we'll get it. All right. Put a little more goop on this side, just lube it up some. I reckon this is called a reverse band. It's going in, whatever it is is going in. The thin one with the pointed ears goes in first. Now try to put that monstrosity in. Ugh. Center support bolt up. Got some grease on my back bushing. Hold it back shaft so it don't fall apart. Make sure that center support bolt is up. I think that's up. Yep, that's up. And that is in. Center support. Uh, outer. This is uh, the one that's got the bevel. Thick, got the bevel on the outside. I want the bevel out. See, so guys, easy peasy in play. Yep, that's uh, about five thousand. Yep, she's in all the way. All right. Intermediate clutch first. Steel, which is also the, I guess kind of you call it a backing plate maybe. Clutch, steel. Get in there, clutch. Get in there, steel. Clutch. Steel. Get in there all the way, clutch. There you go. Steel, clutch. And this guy, 
of course, the clutch. Uh, got this big notch that goes on that big notch side. Like so. And we got this other thick snap ring, it's flat on each end. There, it goes in to hold the clutch pack in. Had to beat it in a submission, it went in. Okay, uh, direct drum. You'd think it'd be a thrust washer, but no. Uh, this, the clutches, this is where the clutches go, right there on that, so. Let's see if we get this bad boy in. Yeah, it'd be a good idea to put this band in first. Otherwise, it won't go in. Let's see if I can get lucky. Got to pop three times, and then them clutches, three clutches. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Put a little goop on the rings back there. Piston rings, I call them. I don't know what they, they call them, but I call them piston rings. All right, let's go in, going in. This transmission's supposed to be turned upside down so this stuff just kind of falls in, but I'm doing it the hard way. Let's see if I can get it in there. Might take a while. Like everything else you put together, you can hear it when it hits bottom. You can hear it when it goes in. So I think I just got one clutch in so far. So yeah, this might be a while. Oh, no, it ain't eating out there. Yeah. I think that was it. Uh, the front drum goes in next. Uh, I got to this point a while ago, I had to stop because I had a thrust washer left over. Uh, this book's your friend. That guy right there between the racks and carrier and the output. Between the rack, reaction carrier and output carrier, that thrust washer 674 right there. So I had to take it apart, put that in, no big deal. It didn't take me no time. Uh, front drum, I got the thrust washer and that. <laughs> Lean in there, you don't hear it hitting bottom. Now I think it's in there. Yeah, it's hitting bottom now. I got some lube there where the piston rings go in. I got the gasket on, and I got some petroleum jelly where lip where the O-ring goes for the pump. I got my two studs in that I built the pump with to help me get the pump lined up and get it on. Got a thrust washer on the pump, a new O-ring, and uh, some petroleum jelly on that. So here we go. I could probably just put the bolts in that collar today. Take these studs out. Put the bolts in there. See if I can ease them in a little bit. Shift shaft seal. Little socket. Uh, 
shift shaft. Rooster head. Nut. Slide that in. Now, if I got it lined up to get this little finishing nail in there. Tap it in. Bend it down a little bit so it'll stay in. That's done. Let me see if I can get this guy together. Uh, I go ahead and stick that in and confirm the band is working like it's supposed to. I got my new O-ring there. I got my new piston rings. Let's see this one here. This is probably gonna be a bear to get in, no doubt. A little petroleum jelly. You gotta be kidding me, it just fell in. <laughs> Uh, spring, big spring. See if it's to go together without falling apart. Nobody said it was gonna be easy. Tark them down, do they feel good? Put this guy in before I forget it. Take my rubber band off right there. Let that flop down on there. Uh, get that in the hole back there. So I think I remember how this goes. Uh, spring. Up, go that way then. Spring goes on that. Put this guy on like that. Test it out, make sure it's working. Let's see, put it in part. Yep. Take it out of part. Yep. Part. No part. Okay, governor. Uh, I got petroleum jelly on it. Uh, confirm it's working good. They got a, they got a valve inside that. This governor works. So make sure that valve is not sticking. I'm, I can't show you on the camera. I don't think you can see it. But anyway, make sure when you move them gov that governor, that valve goes in and out, and you'll be good. Got to put. Make sure it goes in all the way. I got the new gasket on the cover. Torque them down about that much. And the governor's in and done. So I got a new O-ring on this guy. See if I can get it in there. That's in. Tail shaft housing, got the new gasket on it. Somebody just put a new seal on it, so no sense changing that. Uh, I got some petroleum jelly on the bushing and on the seal. Just run my bolts through the parts washer 2000. Torque them down about that much. 
uh, speedometer gear. Uh, got a new O-ring on it, some uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly on this, on the gear, on the O-ring in here. Uh, put it in there. Put the retaining clip in place. Torque that down till you're happy and you're done with that. All right, torque down the center support bolt. It takes a 12 point thin wall 3 8. All right, that's done. Some of you transmission guys probably already noticed this. But uh, whoever put this transmission together last done some mix mixing and matching of old parts and new parts. And right here they done some mixing, but no matching happened. So, so see, I got I got this servo piston, and I got this servo accumulator. I need this one. So you see what I'm talking about? I got the wrong servo piston for the accumulator piston. So guys, I guess I lied a little bit, just a little bit, because it's not a complete rebuild because I had to order some more parts for my valve body. I got a little bit too much slack on my input shaft, so I had to order a new thrust washer for that, a little thicker one, to take up some of that slack. But hey, we got, we got 98% of it done anyway, so. And uh, when I get those, I'm, I'll do another video, putting the valve body in. Man, that was a lot of work. I'm taking the rest of the day off of pay. <laughs> <laughs>